I usually can follow up there. I got some really cool scriptures today. It's, today is fun because it's about seeking the Lord, you know. Um, but you know what? Before I jump in, hold one. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you, over this message. Lord, let the words that come out of me be your words. The lessons that we learn be your lessons. And that we learn how to apply what you are teaching us today into our lives so that we can grow in our relationship with you and we can impact others to grow your kingdom and make disciples of them as well. Lord, we just give this to you. I ask for your glory to be upon this and for everything to be done to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Now we're ready to go. So there's one game that I have come to find out that is a universal favorite. And it will never, I don't think it will ever change from generation from generation. And that's the game of hide and seek. You know, I don't think there's a single kid that I know of who isn't excited and fun and doesn't want to play hide and seek. You know, with grandma and grandpa, with even with our little granddaughter, she's all in about going to hide and do all that that seeking thing. And so it's 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 a favorite game, and because it's fun, right? There's an excitement when you're a little kid. There's this excitement about trying to choose the ultimate hiding spot. Right? You know, you got to find that ultimate hiding spot that they're never going to find you. And so you're busy seeking to, 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 to hide. And then there's, you know, if you're the seeker, you have the puzzlement that when you turn around, you're like, where do I even begin? Where do I start? Where, where should I go? And, you know, you're, then all of a sudden you're just helter-skelter and they're running all over the place, seeking and finding and digging. And they run right past you because, they, you know, there's this excitement to be in the seeker and not even knowing where to begin. But then there's the anticipation of the person who's being hidden, and you hear them getting closer, and you're like, oh, man, I'm about ready to be found. And, you know, you're kind of like, okay, are they going to catch me? Or are they not going to catch me? Right? There was always that fun excitement. And, you know, and, and then you being the, the person finding, and all of a sudden you're there, and they're hidden, and you're like, I found you, and it's this big victory. We love hide-and-seek. We love hide-and-seek. But there's a couple of conditions to the game, right? Here's a couple of the important conditions. It's only fun when you're hiding that people are actually seeking. Okay? Have you ever played the game? You always knew hide-and-seek was finishing up where you go hide and nobody was looking for you. That, that just took the whole game down and just made it no fun whatsoever. You're hiding. The person's quit already. They're watching TV. You're on to a different game already. <laughs> So in other words, in order for hide-and-seek to be fun, if you're doing the hiding, you need to have somebody seeking you, right? And it's also no fun when you give up as the person trying to find, right? You're kind of like, oh, I give up, I can't find you, you know, and, and, you, and you quit the game that way. So what the heck does this have to do with God? I'm sure you're asking, going, God, you know, hide-and-seek, what does this have to do? Well, God is not exactly hiding, right? He, he, he isn't hiding hide himself from us, but he is a God that wants to be sought after. If you read scripture, he says, seek me. He wants you to be seeking, looking for, he wants you to find him. That's the kind of God that we have. He's not hiding, but you have got to be seeking him in order to discover him. And if we're not doing the seeking, we're not finding, we're not discovering, and we're not finding the Lord. And so God says up here that he wants to be found. Here are some great scriptures in 2 Chronicles 15, 2. This is, uh, we're going to talk about the in-depth about who this was being spoken to. This is uh, a prophet talking to King Asa that says, The Lord will stay with you as long as you stay with him. When, whenever you seek him... You will find him. But if you abandon him, he will abandon you. Actually, this warning was given to two different guys in the Bible. Very close together. We're going to, you know, just out of curiosity, here's a biblical quiz. This is, this is a tough one, a little unfair, but do you know who else this was spoken to? Does anybody else have a, a, an idea of who this was given to? King David gave almost the exact same words to Solomon, his son, before he killed him. Two kings were given the exact same quote to say, 
the Lord will stay with you as long as you stay with him. If you seek him, you will find him. But if you abandon him, he will abandon you. Both King Solomon and King Asa were given these words. We're going to find out more about them at the end. But in Proverbs 8, 17, it says, I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently find me. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Notice there's some conditions there. You can't just be out there wandering aimlessly, looking for God and, and for him to find. You, there's not this thing where you can just kind of just, just aimlessly look and you discover him. God says, you need to be seeking me diligently. You need to be seeking me with your heart. You need to be an active participant in the seeking of the Lord. You can't just let it happen. You've got to do some work on this. Now, I'm not saying earn anything. I'm just saying God has a condition. He wants you participating in this. He wants you to be seeking this. But see, here is the problem. You know, if you remember back to hide and seek, there's times where you couldn't find them. You couldn't, you, you, they hid so well, you couldn't find the person hiding and you'd give up. Well, I'll tell you what, when we really think about this, there are times in life that we say, Lord, I'm seeking you, but I can't find you. There are times where it literally feels like God cannot be found in our time of need. God says he wants to be found, and if we seek him, he'll be found. But we know that there are times in life where we're like, that's not true. It felt that way, right? It felt as if God was not to be found. We couldn't really and so the question is, sometimes I ask, God, do you really want to be found? There are times we're not too sure. I mean, am I the only person that's had this question come across through your mind? God, are you, do you really want me to find you? Because I'm trying, but I can't seem to find you. Why does it seem there's times where he is unfindable? How do we reconcile that conflict of our faith? There's times where we need him, and we're finding and seeking, but he's He's not findable. And the question I really want to ponder is, what do we do when we can't find him? What do you do when you can't find the Lord? There's two questions. Do you quit? Or do you double down your efforts? Let's, let's ponder. Let's figure that out at the end of this thing. Now, the stakes on this are very, very important. If we get this wrong, if we get this wrong and we think, you know, God says he can be found if we seek him. But if we don't believe that, or if we give up and we can't find the Lord in our time of need, and we say, I, I, you win, God, you can't be found. Well, then all of a sudden there's a negative aspect to this that if we say that, then we start to blame God for being distant or unfindable. We exasperate the problem, right? Once we say, God, I can't find you, I will guess I'll take care of this on my own. No, nope, I, I looked for you, I needed you, but I couldn't find you in time, so I'm going to make the decision now. I'm going to go ahead and do it my way. God, you're not being faithful, you're not answering my prayer. So that's the negative consequence that if we don't get right, understanding that if God wants to be found, he will be found if we seek him diligently. But if we don't believe that, boy, oh boy, our Christian walk and our witness suffers tremendously when we choose to not believe what God's promised us. But there's the positive aspect, but when we understand what God expects of us, then we can discover him. And so in other words, we need to understand that his promises are true. Just because we can't find God, it isn't because God's not being unfair, it's because we aren't doing something we need to. We need to learn and turn ourselves and evaluate ourselves for a second before we go out and blame God. And so why can't we find God? There's four basic things I want to say here. When, when we can't find God, there's four basic problems that we're dealing with. <clears throat> the first problem that we face when we can't find God is that it is a faith issue. It's a faith issue. When we can't find God, it's because we're not exercising our faith. Or, 
let me give it a second option. God is stretching our faith and developing it, testing to see if we'll go deeper, if our faith won't crack. And so either one, we're not having enough faith or we're going through a time of testing where God goes, I want to see how deep your faith is. And I want to grow it a little bit. I want those, that roots of the faith that you have in me to go a little deeper. And the promises in Hebrews 11:6 6 says this. It, it says, and without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who, what? Seek him. But if you don't have faith and you don't believe, you will never find God. You will never discover God if you don't have faith in him or belief in who he is and his promises. Faith is the core to us finding God. Now, there are some people out there who says, oh, there's no way to find God. There's, he's unknowable. There's no way. That's because they're not willing to take a step of faith and believe in his promises. They're not willing to take that. No, I'm not going to believe in God until he smacks me and shows himself and reveals himself to me. And until that happens, I'm not going to believe in him no matter what. Well, good luck with that. Because without faith and the belief of God, you're never going to be, he's never going to be found. And so we need to know that when we are having a lack of faith in ourselves, we need to evaluate, Lord, am I not having faith enough to know that your promises are true, that I can find you if I seek you? That's the first question I always, always ask yourself. God, I can't find you. Lord, am I, am I exercising enough faith? Do I believe that I can find you? The simple fact is if you believe you can find them, you don't quit, right? Go back to the hide-and-seek game. If I believed that I could find somebody, I was going through that house again. I was going to look under everything. Maybe I didn't look behind the couch. Maybe I didn't look underneath the curtain. You know, I went through with double effort. If I knew that I could find them, they're in this house. I can find them. Right? There you have faith, and all of a sudden your efforts, it's kind of like with God. He says, if you believe that you're going to find me, boy, oh, boy, our attitude is a whole different ball game than if we doubt. So that's, it's, why can't we find God? The first thing is to deal with our faith issue. But then there's the second. I think a lot of people have enough faith, and we believe. I say within this church, I have no doubt in my mind that everybody here has faith in God, and they have believe in his promises. So we have to go down to a deeper level. The second thing from Scripture that's very clear is, if you can't find God, it's an effort issue. You're not trying. Second Chronicles 15, 4 says this, but whenever they were in trouble, this is talking about Israel just after it was about with King Asa. It said this, but whenever they were in trouble and turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, and sought him out, they found him. Sought him out. They were in trouble. They had problems. But every single time they said, where is he? And they say, where is this God of our? He's going to help us. I know he can help me. And so they said, where is he? They went into seeking mode, and they sought him out. And when they sought him, he answered their prayers. He provided in their need because they were seeking him, not giving up on him. That was a characteristic of King Asa's reign. Now, if you were to go to several other kings, the king right before King Asa and after him, there was the opposite. They turned away from the Lord, and they stopped seeking him, and boy, oh boy, did they find trouble after trouble after trouble. Proverbs 8, 17, once again, says, I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently. We can't just say, wake up in the morning going, hey, God, are you there? Oh, I hope you're with me today. Okay, I'll see you later. No. No, that's not diligently seeking him. That's just casually acknowledging him. Seeking him revives time in our knees on our prayer and time talking to him. Seeking him takes time in the word and studying his word. you got to be diligent. You can't just do a little bit and, and expect this thing. You've got to diligently Find, we'll find him. And Jeremiah 29, 13 once again goes, 
You can't be half-hearted about this. You can't be half-hearted. You, you seek, it says, you will seek and find me when you seek me with what? All your heart. You got to want you got to want this. There is an effort issue to seeking. You can't just be wandering. <laughs> I think some of my kids sometimes when they're, when they're looking for something that's lost, this is how they look. <laughs> wandering aimlessly. They're not looking. They're not seeking. Have you ever done that? Have you ever seen somebody who's looking for their keys? They're just kind of like wandering around. And they just kind of scan. You're like, you're never going to find that book bag if you do that. You're never going to find your keys if you do that. You're never going to find what you're looking for unless you put a little effort in. Well, this is God. I think sometimes we walk around wandering around going, hi, God, where are you? And we just kind of coast and, you know, lollygag around. And God's like, no, he wants you digging. He wants you lifting up things. He wants you digging around going, where are you? Open up that Bible going, where is your word reveal yourself to me? I need you. That's different with all your heart, right? You know somebody is seeking diligently. When I don't can't find my billfold, I'm searching diligently. I'm digging underneath things. I'm going, you know, have you ever had to try to look in your car underneath your seat? And how hard that is to contort yourself to dig and find? Yeah, you're willing to do and and go through pain reaching your hand down and things, getting your fingers caught, you know, you're going well to go through pain to find. Well, how much effort do we give God to try to find him? Do we give him the same kind of effort to seek him out? Now, there's two more why we can't find God I want to quickly address here. We can't find God when we quit. When we quit looking for him, or here I also introduce the sin issue. Once I sin and I start doing what I want, what makes me feel good, and what I want to do, I have effectively at that moment quit seeking God. When I choose to do my way, how I want to, I have at that moment said, I'm done looking for you, God. I'm all now looking here, here, and what I want. And I then quit seeking the Lord. Sin is the biggest way to stop. If you don't, if you want to see God disappear from your life, keep on sinning and he will not be found because when you're busy sinning, you're looking for what you want, what makes you feel good. And that oftentimes doesn't line up with what God has, what's best for us. Now, when you're seeking out God and his presence, you're going to always find what's best and you will find. But the Lord will stay with you as long as you stay with him. This is Chronicles 15, 2. Whenever you seek him, you'll find him. But, but if you abandon him, he will abandon you. He will, it, it will seem like he abandons you. This is Old Testament promises versus Jesus Christ. There's a little bit of difference there. Jesus never stopped searching for the one of the 99. He will continue to pursue. But when it comes to seeking the Lord... It will feel as if he's abandoned you. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. That was what was told to Solomon. There's a little bit of difference in that. King Asa says, says if you abandon him, he'll abandon you. King David told Solomon, but if you forsake him, he will reject you. Now, this is fatherly advice to a son being a king. He says, don't be rejected. Keep seeking. <laughs> Just, they don't want to be lost. We can't find God. We need to see if we quit looking for him. We quit the game. We're just now doing our own thing. Or if we got sin that's coming in and we can't find. And the last thing is, <laughs> once again, this kind of goes back. If you're not searching for God, you're not going to find him. Romans 3.11 says, there is no one who seeks God. We look outside our door. We look outside our house. We look at our culture today, and it seems like Romans 3.11 is all over the place. No one's seeking God. They don't want to know him. They don't want to find him. They're not seeking for him. Worse yet, they're more like saying, could you hide better? I don't even want to know you're there type thing, right? That's our world today. 
And Isaiah 55, 6 says, Man, you seek the Lord while you can find him. Call on him now while he is near. Because the more we don't search for him, the more we quit, the more we reject. There comes a time in some people's lives where when they all of a sudden do turn to find God, they don't know where, they can't find him. Because they have rejected him over and over. They have grieved the Holy Spirit over and over. We need to be praying for those in our families who have who are doing that. We know people right now. I have a feeling there's some of you who, who know this person that is just reject, 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 reject. They're not wanting to find God. They, and whenever they see him, they push him back into the hiding corner saying, don't come out. I didn't invite you to come out of, the, of, your, of your hiding spot. They don't want. They're not searching for him. And we need to be praying for a searching attitude. We really do need to pray that we want, that our culture wants to seek and find God. But so long as they don't want to, they're not going to find him. And we can't expect those who aren't looking for him to know anything about God because, once again, they're not looking for him. Okay? So, the four issues that, hold, what, that stand in between us is a faith is, issue. Do we have faith and do we believe he can be found? An effort issue. Are we putting everything in us diligently with our whole heart, our mind, soul, strength to find him? Are we, have we quit looking for God? And then are we just not even searching? There's a difference between quitting and not searching. We can always restart the game. We need to be looking for him, okay? So let's go on to the tale of two kings. Let's learn a lesson from King Solomon and King Asa. King Solomon, we all know who he is. He is the son of King David, the second king of the United Kingdom of Israel, Judah. They had not separated. They were one beautiful country. They had all the things going for it. At the end of King David's reign, things were good. King Solomon saw at the beginning of his reign the biggest, you know, that was a blessed kingdom. God was blessing that nation and the people because they were searching for him. But in 1 Chronicles 28, 9, King David told his son, my, and, it says, and Solomon, my son, learn to know the God of your ancestors intimately. Worship and serve him with your whole heart and a willing mind. For the Lord sees every heart and knows every plan and thought. Those are some good advice right there. And then he says, if you seek him, you will find him. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. This was, the, this was what the advice was given to King Solomon. Now, fast forward just a couple, three monarchs ahead. All right, three kings away from, from King Solomon to King Asa. And the Holy Spirit came upon a prophet called Azariah. And he was told to tell King Asa this. Says the Lord will stay with you as long as you stay with him. Now, a little footnote. King Asa had just came back from defeating an enemy. He had already kind of demonstrated his commitment to God. He had already shown that he's willing to put faith and trust in him. But God says, I'm going to send you a prophet to even give you. He wanted to encourage and says, if you, all right, if you seek. The Lord will stay with you as long as you stay with him. Whenever you seek him, you will find him. But if you abandon him, he will abandon you. Amazing. Two recommendations, two separate kings, and the responses could not have been further from being different. King Solomon on the for him, him 1 Kings 11.4 reminds us that in King Solomon's old age, they... They being his 1,000 wives, 1,000 wives turned his heart to worship other gods instead of being completely faithful to the Lord his God as his father David had been. In verse 6, it says, In this way Solomon did what was evil in the Lord's sight. He refused to follow the Lord completely as his father David had done. Verse 9 the Lord was very angry with Solomon, for his heart had turned away from the Lord. 
the God of Israel who had appeared to him twice. Solomon not only got great advice from his dad, he, he encountered God face to you. Not, he encountered God through visions and dreams twice. And yet, he did not heed. He did not keep seeking the Lord. He abandoned God and was indeed rejection. And because of his failure to seek the Lord, the whole nation split. Very much of a direct relationship because Solomon refused to seek after the Lord. If he just would have kept being persistent, diligent, with his whole heart searching after the Lord, who knows? Me had fame, fortune, money. I mean, if you read, what was it, Lamentations? Or, no, Ecclesi uh, Ecclesiastes. Lamentations is Jeremiah. Sorry. If you read the book Ecclesiastes, it, you read about King Solomon going, it, it, everything's pointless, everything's meaningless. You know, he had everything. He had riches, wisdom, knowledge, everything that he could possibly want. And yet he, in the end, said, man, it's all pointless because he didn't seek after the Lord. At the very end, he says, hey, keep your eye on God. Now, King Asa, on the other hand, received this thing, and he succeeded. King Asa, Asa's heart remained completely faithful to the Lord throughout his life. Completely faithful. Seeking after the Lord. Chronicles 15, 4 says, But whenever they were in trouble and turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, and they sought him out, they found him. I quoted that already. The whole nation, because Asa kept searching for God, the nation was also searching for God. And they found him because they sought him. In verse 15, it says, They sought God eagerly, and he was found by them. Actually, the writer about King Asa, if you read the, all of those, those uh, documentation in the Bible, that's 2 Chronicles 15 and 1 Kings 15, especially in Chronicles, really emphasize the seeking. I think there was like eight or nine times that the author talked about they sought, they sought, they seek, they found. It was a great example. King Asa succeeded because he pursued, and the nation did too. Do you want to see your life change? Do you want to see things change in your family? Then you have to be the one that starts to set the tone by always seeking the Lord. Because when you seek after him, he will be found. And then he will also bless. And so how do we apply this? What do we, what do we should we take all out from this? <clears throat> God wants to be found. But he won't be. He won't be found if we aren't seeking him. Some of you are like, Pastor, this is, yeah, no duh. But some of us aren't seeking. Some of us aren't diligently. We're, he won't be found if we aren't really giving him effort to try to find him. He won't be found if there's sin in our life where we stop seeking his will and we start seeking our own. So whenever you have a distance issue, you say, God, I can't find you. Or you, got, you have sin that's in your life that's making it difficult. And the last one is we aren't trying. We're not seeking the Lord. He won't be found if we're not trying to find him. Simple as that. But here's the great news. Here's the great news. Here's the good news. This is what is so beautiful. That God will be found. All we got to do is seek him. Look for him. Try to find him. He'll be found. It's not profound. It's not difficult. It's not hard. It's simple. If you want to find him, look for him. But past, no, it really is that simple. If you want to find God and you feel distant, then start looking for him and start seeking him. And then seeking him means that we not only do the seeking, but we also have the faith and the belief that he'll be found. <laughs> he says he wants to be found. Do you believe that? Seriously, I ask this question. Do you really believe he wants you to find him? Because if you don't believe that, you'll never find him completely but if you believe that with all your heart, do you need to re-emphasize? Do you need to recommit to the Lord going, I believe you, Lord. I believe you can be found. I want to find you. That heart attitude changes everything. God will be found if you are diligent. 
How diligently are you seeking the Lord? How often throughout a day do you give him seek time? How many, how many times a day do you play hide and seek with the Lord? This is a game you should play with him regularly, going, Lord, you're, I want to find out more. Go hide. I'm going to seek you. Tell I, I, I Have fun this week. Say, Lord, go hide. I'm going to find you. Challenge him. Because what are you going to have to do to find him? You're going to have to pray. You're going to have to read the Bible. And you're going to have to be talking to him and looking for him. And guess what? God's not going to hide so much you won't find him. He's going to be found by you. But boy, I'll tell you what. When you discover him this way, you're going to discover something new. And you're going to be a little bit closer to him. And a little bit deeper in relationship than you were before you started. Play hide and seek. <coughs> Don't you be hiding. Okay? Don't go wrong on that. You are never the one that's hiding. Okay? Because God can see you no matter where you go. All right? Remember that. Whatever that best hiding spot is, he sees you. All right, I can use all kinds of scriptures on that, but that's a whole different sermon. Because we know people who try to run away from God. That just don't work. Say, Lord, I want to find you. I want to seek you this week. I want to discover and find more about you. Help me this week to do that. And when you're doing it, do it with all your heart and all your mind and be fully invested in the game. Don't play half. Go seek Just remember the look on the face <laughs> of your little grandchild. Okay? You can picture this, or maybe your own your own children. When they go hide, and you I just saw this picture. I wish I would have uploaded it up here. It showed this little girl hiding them behind a tree. And it showed the mom peeking around the side looking at her, and she was being found. And there, in this little girl, there was this pure joy and excitement of being found. Right? Do you remember? You've seen that look. That, oh, you found me. God has that same look. Don't be uncomfortable with that. When you peek around and you see him, he's smiling at you. And he's loving the fact that you found him. He's so proud of you and he's so excited about it. Let's play again. See him as your loving father. Not meanly making it hard for you to find, but he's your loving father who's playing and wants you to discover him and all of the wonder of him as you seek him diligently this week. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for being the amazing God that you are. <laughs> you want to be found. You don't hide in a way that is, is cruel unto us, Lord. When you play hide and seek with us, it is in a blessed way to have our relationship with you grow deeper. When we seek and find you, we discover more about you. When we seek and find you, we know you just a little better every time we do. Lord, thank you for making me and asking me and telling me, you seek after me and you will find who I am. Thank you for being a God who can be found. You're not distant. You're not outside of my life. You're not somewhere where I can't obtain you. You are right here, right now, and I can find you, and I can talk with you, and I can know you more. God, I just want to say a thank you for being that kind of father. And Lord, I just want to send a moment and say thank you for giving me your son, Jesus, who is the ultimate key to hide and seek. When I look at Jesus, I know how to find you. <laughs> when I look at Jesus, I have already found you. And I turn my face and I say, Lord Jesus, thank you for making this connection. That you, that you have bridged the gap. Because in the Old Testament, Lord, they couldn't find you in the same way we can. We have been blessed because Jesus, you have given us direct access. And Lord, I do not take that for granted. Thank you.
And oh, Holy Spirit, help me this week as I seek the Father a little bit more, as I seek to find and discover more about him. Holy Spirit, I pray that you unlock new things, new places, new experiences that I get to have with my Father as I continue to seek him with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my soul, and all my strength I give to you this week, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.